Hi guys, welcome back. Can't see anything. <laughs> oh, just got to clean my glasses. Look, um, oh, bits of, always get bits come back at you, then yeah. Right, I had a Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. He sent me a piece of black, black walnut. walnut. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to turn that into just a, a, a little bowl. So he said he uses uh, he uses carbide quite a bit, but he is slowly starting to use what we call traditional tools, so other tools. So, um, yeah, but he watches the channel and he said he'd like to see me turn that and if I could just, you know, use it, use them, the tools that I can normally use. So that's what I'm gonna do. He did also actually ask me as to, um, why do I use a spindle gouge when I'm turning a bowl? Because he's been told at his club, you never ever use a spindle gouge on a bowl. And Oh, sorry, I've got a six mil hole in here and I'm putting it on my worm screw. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right, well, there's so many, <laughs> so many things to why I use it only because I love using the spindle gouge on a bowl. It, I can do so much more with a spindle gouge than you'd ever do with a bowl gouge on a bowl. Can get a better finish than get with a bowl gouge, got more control with a spindle gouge. I just find it's a lot better tool for the job. Um, not on all bowls, not necessarily on, on, on bigger bowls. Uh, I'm bringing my tail stock up just because I can't. It's, on, it's only on a small, thin worm screw, so I'm bringing that up just for a bit of support while I just get everything into balance. Um, yeah, uh, I've, I've used it for years. Well, to be perfectly honest, when I first early days of, of wood turning, um, I didn't even know it was a spindle gouge I was using. I thought I was using a bowl gouge, but it turned out it was actually a spindle gouge. Because, you know, you're, like I said before, you're lucky nowadays, guys, you've got Facebook, you've got YouTube, and you've got all that stuff. I never had none of that. So there was no looking on there, I'll put a picture up, can anyone tell me what this is? Is this a bowl gouge? You didn't have that choice, you weren't there. And in all honesty, I think it's sad, really, because you learn a hell of a lot by your mistakes and by other things and, and by learning you just learn stuff and now it's taken away because you just go and ask a question and there you go there's all the information it's like a quick learn isn't it so yeah but anyway i like it because i have i i, I love using the spindle gouge i have so much control it depends on what i'm actually doing as to what grind it's the grind that matters it's not not this the gouge doesn't mean if it don't get caught up with names that means nothing that that piece of steel there is 13 mil okay on a half in, on a uh, three eighths gouge which is half, i call it half inch half inch spindle gouge because it's actually half inch this shank right don't matter about the flute i don't worry about that that is a same that's a half inch flute half inch bowl gouge it'd be three eighths because they measure the flute but the actual steel is that both exactly the same pieces of steel that's no different whatsoever the only thing that's different this one's had a slightly deeper flute put in it than this one which means the thinner the metal in the center to the bottom is actually thinner than the metal is there okay this people would say has more strength because it comes round further and that's shallower well there's not you don't use them that way you use them that way i'm not getting into those arguments all i ever say is you use what you want to use and what you feel comfortable using there are no laws, there are no rules, not in wood turning. What you do is up to you. As long as you feel safe, as long as you feel comfortable, as long as it works for you, then do it. Don't do what works for Fred, Jack, Joe, Jim, or whatever, because that might not work for you. And I'd never tell you, don't use that or do use this. You use whatever. If you want to use a spindle gouge, I can show you a good way of use it, how to use it and how to use it correctly um, and what you can do with it okay and what you can do safely with it but i won't say use it that's entirely up to you i do i've had people tell me oh oh you shouldn't use a bowl gouge it's dangerous a spindle gouge it's dangerous it's this it's that that's your opinion mate you keep it to yourself don't tell me i'll use what i use if i have an accident with it my fault no one else's absolutely down to me my fault but in all the years i've been turning i'm not going to say it 
but I'm <laughs> quite happy using it, okay? Right, so I'm gonna start this up, stand to the side, let it spin up, okay? And like I always do, my first cut, I take by standing over here, out of the way, and I just come in and take my first cut, a bit of wax on there, it's a bit out of balance. Right, I'm standing here, it's just anything's gonna happen, it's gonna happen over there and not here with me. Right, there we go. Okay, so now I'm quite happy to come and stand in front of it. I know nothing's gonna happen, nothing's flying off. And now I will just come in. The only reason I'm putting my hand in is just to shield me from any savings. <laughs> I don't hold the spindle guards like that for any other reason than to stop the savings coming back and hitting me. Right, now then, I've got to start thinking what sort of shape I'm going to do on this. I'm going to bring this round here. I will have a... I reckon I'll have a recess in the bottom of the Because that's what I like. Me too. Sorry? Me too. Yeah, I like I like the uh, yeah, fairly basic shape really, I suppose. I don't really know what shape yet. I'm just looking at it and. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, so I'm going to take that away for a minute, get rid of the... It's on a worm screw, so it should be alright. So I just... Yeah, if you want to buy tools to show, I just hit my finger on my finger because of someone... What idiot puts their spindle gouge under their arm? <laughs> this idiot. Look, cut myself. <laughs> At least I know it's sharp. <laughs> right now again, what look look at that blood. Can I put tissue? Mm. I'll put it in the wood shavings. <laughs> so you don't put your chisel under your arm. <laughs> Especially if you're gonna move your hands about. <laughs> Right, another thing that matters with the spindle gouge, before I go any further, because see on this one I've got a 45 degree grind, okay? It's 45 degree. So coming round here, because I want to get I want to get a slight in there, okay? So I want that to be so a bit like a bit of an OG, but not quite an OG. But I want to come in. Well it's gonna be hard, I'm gonna get tool marks. That's due to the grind. So this has got 45 and I would not use that one well I say I would not use it I have used it on following because I will use a spindle gouge for following as well I'm more than happy to do it right now I have another spindle gouge here which I use for bowls and this has a 60 degree okay so it's quite a steep sort of well a shallow bevel there that will allow me to get the curves right and fantastic for hollowing a bar. I can hollow a complete bowl with that, no trouble whatsoever. Sorry, I'm still bleeding like I'm getting, I'm donating blood here. <laughs> I think actually I might have a plaster up there underneath that um, bottle. There, that, that's it, yeah. Sorry guys, I'll have to put plaster because I'm just going to drip blood everywhere, that's all. It's, that, it's nothing, see, look, it's a slight, it's, a, it's such a slight cut just there. It's like a trouble is my gouges are like razors so <laughs> it don't take much to... <laughs> yeah don't put your chisel under your arm Lisa's really gonna good. do her first aid bit now so, there you go, <laughs> all right there you go stick it around my little finger yeah. there 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 that's it there 
<laughs> that's it thank you right there we go we won't bleed over anything right let's carry on yeah so this one has a different grind on it see so this this one will now allow me to be able to come round and get my curves that I want there that curve right I'm gonna sort out my recess so I'm gonna just come in there so just so I can clean this bottom up There we go, nice and clean. So now I'm going to do my recess on this. And I've got my little my little tool which has got marked up on it. There's my recess side. Oops, put that down a little bit. So that goes to the middle. And there we go. That's my recess. As simple as that. Right, cut the tool. Don't need it too deep, that's going to be plenty deep enough. I'll take a couple more little cuts out of that while I've got the cutting tool in my hand. Why not use what makes it easy? Do that too. Uh, could we hold the thing out of the way? <laughs> there we go. Right, now this ain't the best at all because of that angle. It's not the best for doing the inside of the recess. I'm about to go back to this one. a little bit of my line there so that's it right there we go right okay I'm just going to use my detail 90 chisel and I'm going to put a couple of steel beads just shows I've done something on the bottom right okay so now I want to take that edge there right so that's what I'm having now I've got to decide how I'm going to do this uh, what shape I'm going to put on the outside of the bowl now <laughs> so. mark there you see that's gone see that you can't do that with a bowl gouge you wouldn't be able to do that actual cut with a bowl gouge not the one I've just done there you might do similar but you won't do the same and it definitely won't get the same effect right. I think I want to take a little bit of that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go. I, I want that sort of shape, I think, there. Yeah. Right, okay, let me uh, finish the blood there, look. I must have dripped down there. Right, now I need to come off of that one because that one's not going to do the finish cut that one. Oh, it's coming through the plaster, I think. Sorry? No, it's coming through the plaster. 
Oh, it is. That's kind of for the fuss. It must be a lot. Of, I don't know. I bleed a lot. <laughs> I do bleed a lot, guys. <laughs> They're right. It is dangerous for spindle girls, I suppose. If you put it under your arm. Get that curve Stopping now. Mm. Either that or I'll run out of blood. <laughs> run out of full rest then. <laughs> That's it, finish that cut now. Right, that's it, nice. That's nicely finished there. Okay, now I'm thinking... Oh, I don't know whether I want to or not here. I'm thinking I want to just put a... a lot of, can I put some more tissue? I've got blood pouring out of my stuff. I'm a little bleeder, I am. <laughs> Good little bleeder. Right, okay. Now anyone else, he would have just... Edited that, I don't, you can see it. Yeah, you can see the blood. You can see the blood and tears I put into this stuff. <laughs> right, okay, I want to put a little feed here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know whether it's going to work or not. No, I'll just do it. Right, I'll put a little feed in there. Back. I've got to get rid of that flat. That's better. That's more what I want. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's what I wanted to do. I just want to put that little bead in there. into colouring things but there you go never mind I'm shocked actually I thought my blood would be blue
Paste on it. No, it is not chocolate. <laughs> Pack it up, you. It's everywhere, doesn't it, eh? Mm. Too bad. Mm. That ain't too shabby. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. Let's get a turn around and follow it out. It's on a screw, so... Right, so... Let me turn that off for a second. I can just... Right, there you go. So that's all I wanted to do on the bottom there. I wanted to roll that couple of that little bead in the there so it'd give me that little foot sorry <laughs> there so it'd give me that little little bit on the bottom there okay that's what I was after doing that's 
nice finish on that. So now we'll turn it around, we'll get it hollowed out. Did you try it at 4K? 60. You can't see it on there when it's on the video. Top corner. Oh, it's alright. We have to do it before you actually do the. Right, I'm on my recess there. So I've got it tight and a quarter. That's it. That's all it needs. Don't go too far. Right, that all seems to be holding alright. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> now, like I say, there's several ways you want to hollow. If you want to hollow with a spindle gouge, you can. It's perfectly safe to do so. Um, strength doesn't come into anything because you, the most you're going to overhang that tool rest is that much and that is as strong as any bowl gouge or anything when you're only overhanging that it's got nothing to do with tang that's an outdated thing about tang because tang, the, the spindle gouges ain't made like they used to be years and years ago i mean these uh these sort of gouges they don't have a tang the same they they get sharpened to a point and they go in i mean these are old these these i've got a couple of these i've got actually three gouges and they are like 50 years 50 nearly 60 years old these gouges now um but again yeah they work brilliant i use them on the outside of a bowl no problem right okay now the only problem comes as i said with with the grinds it's, it's the grind that matters it's not don't get obsessed by your tool it's the, it's the the name of the tool doesn't really matter that's what matters that bit there Believe it or not, that whole tool does not matter. It don't make no difference what any of that is. The only bit that matters is that on this end, what, what you put on this end of your tool, okay? Now, like I said before, this one has a 45 degree grind on it, okay? Now, yes, I can use it and come in. Now, again, don't come in with it flat. Don't come in with it doing anything. Just flute closed, okay? Flute closed. Rotate it slightly and it will start to cut. Okay, flip close there, look, that's all it is. Bevel's in contact, rotate it and it will come in. Okay, and it will cut. Now it will cut as aggressive as you want it to be or as soft as you want it to be. Now the problem with, as I've said before, the problem with a 45 degree, it Bowl gouge or spindle gouge now there. Right, this is the problem now. Now I'm gonna get this because I cannot roll it round without the heel making contact. So I'm gonna get these lines. Okay? That's why I wouldn't use this one really to hollow the bowl. Nice if it's a steep sided, but not on this. And it works to say the same bowl gouge or spindle gouge. If you've got 45, you're not gonna get those curves. Not about putting tool marks in. But see this one because I've got a because I've got a totally different grind on it. See that's the first one. Okay, so you can see the difference on the grinds. Okay. That's 45, that one's 60. Not what a lot of people would put on a spindle gouge, just a 60 degree grind. But use exactly the same way, don't do anything any different. It's not this, that's the only thing that needs to change and that's the only thing that's different and that makes the tool behave in a different way. So again, we rotate, we pick up the cut, we come in, now we can run a smooth cut round because we've got a different grind on it. It allows us to come around and round that bottom but this won't be as good with steep sides unless you come right over this way, okay? At the moment, we're not doing that because we're just picking up our cup here and we're coming in. See, and there's nothing wrong with this. There's no danger. People seem to think a spindle gouge is dangerous. 
I've heard all sorts of comments from you. Uh, it'll kill you. You'll be you'll have stitches. You'll be yeah. Well, you might if you catch a finger on it. <laughs> there really is no problem with using swimmer gas. Okay. If it's not for you, then don't do it. And all we have to do is flute close, roll it, pick up the cup. It's as simple as that. You don't need to overhold it or anything. Flute close, it can't do a thing, okay? Flute close, we rotate it, we just throttle back a little bit. There's the cup, it will pick it up. And then we just let it follow forward. It will take its own path. If you miss a bit, come back, just rotate and pick it up again. And come round. Okay, and it's the same as we go over in a bowl gouge. And it's the same, I oh, should just do a quick bit with a bowl gouge, just so you know. I'm not lying. Now I've got a same size tool, but bowl gouge. So now we've got the wings. The only difference is the wings come over, okay? It's got 10 degree less, this has got 50 degree bevel on it, okay? Wings come up a little bit more, that's the only difference. But again, don't come in with your flute open, close it, rotate, follow around. Exactly the same cut. It's exactly the same cut, and that's why you can go from one tool to another because you don't have to use them any different. That's the only thing that changes. That makes the tool behave differently. But you do the same. Now when you start to come down, then you want to change your angle. You don't want to be here. You want to come round and you want to have your bevel facing where you want to go. But again, close your flute. Keep it closed. Come in. Slightly rotate. Pick up the cup. We're in control. If your cut's starting to get too deep, just back off a little bit and start another cut. Just pull it back a fraction. But if you're okay, keep going. But if you find it gets a little bit grabby on you, just back it off a little bit. You can always pick the cut up again. Just run back, pick it up and take the rest of it out. And if you keep your bevel in contact and you just keep coming back and making your cut, you ain't got to worry about picking up the this cut again. You ain't got to worry about this positioning over here. Just keep your bevel in contact. All you're doing is you're just coming backwards with it. Okay, rotate, kick the cut up again. And then we go. Right, I want to see what shape I'm getting now. Alright, okay. Little skip there. Mainly because I wasn't round quite enough. If you come in with it on this right angle, it will want to chase and go that way. Actually, I want to take the front edge off anyway. Yeah. That reminded me, see? Yeah, that's nice and flat. All right, okay, so. Coming round. Now again, I can have my cut here, close my flute, bring my handle round, and then reopen and start and come in. So if you're rounding, you want to come round. Don't try doing it with the flute open, because you'll get to a certain point and it'll want to skip. Close your flute, just turn it off. 
it's, it's like just turn it off until you need it. So if we're here on the side, we can come in and make our little cut. And I want to carry it on, but I'm at the wrong angle. So turn it off for a second. Turn it off. Move yourself round. Throttle it on, turn it on again, and push it up again. I'm going to pick up a bit more wood here, so I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to flatten it off. Starts to get a little bit grabby, so just rotate, turn it off. It's going to get a little bit more depth down in there. Right, I'm nowhere near there yet. Right, okay, and then of course, as I've said before, we can do exactly the same with the carbide. This is the little six mil, come in, put the cut up. Thing again. Right now I know Stuart sure did say about he was starting to use it just got a hold of a SCH. This is the SCH2. Oh well, actually I meant to say about that. A little thing for Alan. <laughs> I made myself a couple of handles out of that <laughs> U you gave me. Yeah. Oh the beautiful look. Do you know U is my favourite wood mm -hmm. and I've never made a tall handle out of it for myself. Never. And I made a couple, look at that, he just signed them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there you go, and I made a couple for my gouge. I might as well show you while I'm here. Yeah. Made these ones, look at those, because they look beautiful. Right? Made two of those up as well. So these are for my homemade, homemade ball gouges. Yeah, and they work good as well. <laughs> my homemade ones. Made them myself. Right, okay. Let's get back to it. Sorry. Yes, the SCH. Perfect chisel for doing the bowls. Just put it on there. Come in. I'm a little bit high there. Because I've got over, it's got a bigger bar, see? Right, actually what I'm going to do now, I'm going to actually turn my tool rest in slightly. Now that's not, as I've said before, it's not for support, it's for the angle. Because I need to come round with the tool, so I need to get the angle correct. And all you need to do with this tool, you don't need a lot of pressure, just downward pressure, that's all it is. This down, you don't have to hold on to it. So come along. So, there we go. So we get a lovely smooth finish as well. This is probably one of the easiest tools to use. Keeping this fairly flat here because I've got a recess in there. I don't even know how deep I am yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm nearly there. I'm not far off on that bottom bit. Right, I want to come in with my spindle gouge again. Or my spindle gouge. Because I want to come in and I want to take a bit of this down here.
Now I'm looking at the shape. Now I've got to be careful here because my shape comes in here. Now I've got plenty of meat at the moment. I've got plenty there. Right now, let me see. I see a little pull mark coming out, just come back, pick it up again. You get a little dibble there, just come back, pick it up. As soon as you see it, don't leave it, go back for it. No man left behind. There we go. Right, so you get a nice smooth finish, but got a little bit thickness there still so I want to get that out tiny little bit more right okay now I've got a couple of pull marks just there at the moment I knew I was going to get that now Right, okay. Now a lot of that, see what I'm gonna do, because I want to get a cleaner cut here now. So now, what might seem strange to a lot of people, I'm gonna actually turn my speed up a little bit. Okay? Because I want to get centrifugal forces come into play and I want them to work for me, not against me. That's a nice smooth, I've got it. very, very tiny just there, very, very, you can hardly notice it. There, yeah, I've got it. And then to come round that bottom curve, you must open the flute to come round it. And then close the flute to come across the bottom. Dip there. Very slight dip in that bottom there. And then come back here and pick up. Come in slight little bit deeper. There we go, right. I've got a little bump there. Right, I think that's gone. Trying to get there. I start getting nitpicky now. Right, okay. Right, I can turn it back down just a fraction. Right, so yeah, if you're having trouble getting that finished cut, quite often, turn your speed up and you'll find it'll be all right. Set up a few more forces. Right now, like I always say, the best one to actually get your clean up along the bottom is this one. This will take out anything there, that little curve. I can just feel it, I can feel it, I can't see it, but I can feel it.
there. It's like a hair coming off. That got it, gone. That's the uh, that 12 mil AU cutter. Okay. That's my bottom feed, if you like. Right. Okay. Let's put these back. And we'll just do a quick, a quick little sound on that. I think I'm all right on the front there. I'm all right there. I'm okay down there. Followed the curve round there and followed the curve there, so I'm okay. Should be good. Right. So if it's gone on a little bit, guys. But I'm not in any rush. I'm on the side pump there. Actually, I have. I've got a very little bit just there. Like I can just see it. I can't feel it, but I can see it. Right, hang on. Let me take that away. Was gone. Right, the One eighty grip. Otherwise, you can get the sanding mark, see? Take that sharp edge off with that inside. Wax flicked off. Something flicked off up there. <laughs> 
There's a bit of wax that was on the cloth that was put up there. I stuck to the skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take this off now. Done with the turning bit, I'll take that off. Yeah, yeah I'll see better now. Mm -hmm. I need to put a new visor protector thing on mine. It's got a bit mucky now. Right, that's that one done with. Wax on. Seconds. Oh, that's nice. That's, nice. that's fairly pretty. It's a nice yeah. piece of walnut, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. Right, no marks in the bottom because we had the perfect circle for that. And there we go, hollowed out. Okay. Yeah. Quite like that. Little dish type bowl. More of a dish than a bowl, I suppose. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right, thank you for joining me guys. Hope you enjoyed that one and I'll see you on the next one. Toodle pip. Bye guys. <laughs>